Hey, welcome to the Danger Zone. It's Ashley. Everything in this video was found on a public domain. Lots of love and many blessings your way. There's so much happening, you guys. Let's talk about it real quick. There's been some new discoveries regarding her launch, her debut of that charity clothing capsule, and that's what we're going to talk about first. This shows so much arrogance, such an ego, such a narcissistic situation. Megan's six-minute speech, the main point she was trying to drive home to everybody was that she didn't want these women to feel like they were in last year's fashions or receiving rejected clothes that just weren't big sellers. And in between all of that, she said, I, me, my, myself, 43 times in six minutes. And that's not too easy to do if you're not a narcissist. She hosted this debut on the rooftop of John Lewis in downtown London. It would only make sense to me if the majority of the guests that were there happened to have been clients of SmartWorks, the participants. Yet only a few of these women received invites. And this is including the models that modeled the clothes. The majority of the party was made up of designers, a couple of journalists, and her friends. What's a party without a goodie bag? Maybe it's just the way my mind works, but what's the first thing that pops into your head when you find out what's inside these goodie bags? Please let me know in the comments. First, there was a Bobbi Brown lip tint. Then there was a face cleaner. And we all know the vegan could not resist tucking in a leather wallet. And of course, a reusable water bottle. Are those not everything you would carry in the event you are a woman of the night? I'm shocked there's not a condom in that bag. Now this stuff cost 110 bucks. It was very sad that she gave these bags to all her guests that totaled up to $110 per bag and she didn't even offer so much as a meal card to the ladies from SmartWorks. They don't need these trinkets. They can't feed their children lip tint or fill up their gas tank with some face cleaner. Here's the realization, you guys. If it doesn't benefit Megan, she is not going to be involved. Her six minutes about me speech, she said, I promise that we're going to start making more community-based projects here in my new home in the UK. And when asked about these community-based projects that she has in mind, she stumbled. She couldn't answer. All of the sudden, she could hear Archie crying. He needed to be fed. She stressed so much that she wanted these clothes to be up to date, modern, hatting in styles, nothing from the reject pile from the past seasons. Everything that flew out of her mouth, everything that dribbled out of her mouth, turned out to be a lie. There's nothing new about these five pieces. They're actually from the low seller rejected piles. Yet she stresses the importance that these clothes should be new. And it's turned out she's included all of her new friends into this. She's scratching their back and they're scratching hers. This entire ordeal is not about empowering women. It's about empowering Megan and her friends. And that's a pathetic shame. And speaking of being rejected, Africa has already warned Harry and Meghan, we don't need you here, and we don't want you here. And that goes long-term or short-term. They said, please don't bring your sermon here. We're not in the mood to listen to it. We don't care for anything y'all have to say. The top officials in Africa have even sent warning to Buckingham Palace that the people just do not want to listen to anything Harry and Meghan have to say especially when it comes to human rights of any kind. They've grown fed up with the couple and would prefer them not even to visit. And it's been said that one group of African women have told the media they don't need a break in their day to watch Megan walk about eyeballing the surrounding area as if she's pulling off a white glove inspection. That's a huge statement to make. They said that neither Megan or Harry do anything significant to merit a tour to Africa. And they simply don't want to be bothered. 
And you can see here the only reason they're going is for a UK-Africa partnership. And what does that really mean? That means more money in their pockets. Meghan and Harry's. That's all this is about. Well, I certainly hope they bring security along with them because like a friend of mine pointed out, and I thank you, Sugarbush Squirrel, neither one of them have been going around with their security. Have you guys noticed? We've wondered if this is something they've opted out of by choice or did the queen decide to remove their security? Who knows? Either way, they've been warned. I'm personally curious to see how it ends. Speaking of not wanting to be heard or talked about, the queen gave a warning of her very own. During a ride through the country recently, an old friend joined the queen. He's a retired journalist. They typically get together and just chit chat over things. And from the very start of this ride, the one thing she told this old friend of hers, one stipulation, we'll talk about anything, but I don't want to talk about Harry, Meghan, and Archie. He has since said that the Queen is so hurt and disgusted by Harry and Meghan and their actions, and she would rather have good conversation and keep a merry mood. And it's in his opinion that she is so overwhelmed by their negative behavior, by everything they've done in the last two years that's brought about such negativity on the family. She's very much looking forward to their tour in Africa. So the family might find a break. I doubt it. I'll see you soon and we'll talk fast. Stay safe and be blessed.